This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome to Bird's Eye View on Pet Life Radio. I am your host, Lori Hess. I'm a veterinarian here with our co-host, Dr. Michelle Ravitch, and we are both bird and exotic animal veterinarians. We work at the Veterinary Center for Birds and Exotics, an all-bird and exotic pet hospital in Bedford Hills, New York, and we're here today to talk to you about one of our favorite topics, birds. Right, Michelle? Yes. What we'll be talking about today mostly is bird preventative medicine and why it is important to bring your bird to the veterinarian just like you would with a dog or a cat. And that's a very, very important topic and one topic we discuss all the time on a daily basis, something that is extremely important and one of the topics that unfortunately most people don't even think about when they purchase a parrot or even have a parrot for a number of years or another type of bird. So we have quite a bit to tell you and we are excited to get into the details of why you need to bring your bird to the vet for regular checkups, not just wait until he or she is sick. And so we're going to take just a minute or two of break and we will be right back. Stay perched. We'll be soaring back right after these messages. What if you could protect the life of your cat with something so simple and affordable that you already use every day? Get ready for the evolution of kitty litter. It's Pretty Litter. Along with all the features you've come to expect from your kitty litter, Pretty Litter's patented and scientific formula will also monitor your cat's health and detect illnesses early while providing industry-leading odor control. Two kitty litters, same cat, same price. But there's one important difference. Pretty Litter reacts to your cat's waste by detecting health issues simply by changing color. And the key is that Pretty Litter detects these issues before your cat shows symptoms of physical illness or pain, likely saving you major dollars in vet bills while protecting the health of your cat. What do you think, little guy? Ready to switch litter? Pretty Litter. Colorful insight into your cat's health. Go to prettylittercats.com forward slash cat 101 or use coupon code cat 101 to get 20% off your first subscription order. Let's talk pets on petliferadio.com. Welcome back to Bird's Eye View. I am Dr. Lori Hess, here with Dr. Michelle Ravish. We are your hosts for the Bird's Eye View, and this is a show all about birds, one of our favorite topics. We're both bird and exotic animal veterinarians at the Veterinary Center for Birds and Exotics, an all-bird and exotic animal hospital in Bedford Hills, New York, and we would love to talk to you more today about preventative medicine in birds. So, Dr. Ravish, would you explain to us what that means? Preventative medicine essentially means bringing your pet or your bird to a veterinarian before it's showing any signs of illness. So right when you purchase your bird, for example, to get it checked out and make sure it's healthy. And once a year after that, because diseases can pop up quickly and they don't always exhibit signs of disease outwardly to their owners. So once a year checkups to make sure that their nutrition is optimal and their environment is optimal, and overall they look okay, even though they don't appear sick, just to make sure that we can prolong their life as long as possible and try to catch any diseases as early as possible. So what are some of the diseases we worry about in birds? We worry about quite a few diseases. Certainly a lot of our bird patients can be very long-lived, and they can develop the same sorts of diseases that older people can get, such as kidney disease or heart disease or liver disease. And some of these can involve failure of that organ or infection or inflammation of that organ. And a lot of these changes we can pick up early through physical exams or blood work. I mean, we can track trends and start treatment early before the disease gets worse. So when should owners start to think about bringing their birds in for checkups? They should bring their birds in right away. If their bird has never had a checkup, now is the perfect time to do so, regardless of age. They should also bring any new bird in that they acquire, because birds can carry diseases, and they can be carrying diseases from wherever they came from. It's just important to get them checked out right away. So we don't really want to wait till birds are ill. We don't want to wait till they've been in our homes, potentially with our other birds who may or may not have been checked. We want to just bring them in right away when we get them from the store or we adopt them or we get them from a breeder, right? Right, exactly. 
And birds are very good at hiding signs of illness because in the wild they're prey animals. And that means that if they show any signs of illness in the wild, they're going to be picked off by a predator. So even in our homes, they will hide signs of sickness. And when you start to see that they're not acting right, often the disease is much more advanced than you would think. That's actually kind of different from dogs and cats, right? Because those birds are, are predatory species and they're really out there hunting and they're not hiding signs that way, right? Right, right. And dogs and cats are almost more domesticated. You don't see those specific animals exactly in the wild, whereas the species of birds that we own, you can find them exactly as they are in the wild. And I think one of the problems we face um, that we see as bird veterinarians is that people may pet their cats and dogs, they take them out, they take them on walks, you know, the dog or the cat may be sitting on the couch with them, but a lot of people really don't handle their birds as often or as much as they would a cat or a dog, so they might not notice that the bird is sick. Exactly. That's a very important point. You know, even if you're feeding your bird and it's eating slightly less than normal, that can be a sign that there's something else going on. So what are some of the signs beside that obvious one you just pointed out about appetite, the bird is eating less, that can be a problem sign. What are some of the other signs people might look for in their pet bird to know that there is a problem? Any bit of lethargy, the bird is sleeping more than normal, it's fluffed. When you feed it in the morning, it doesn't come right down to the food bowl, it keeps its head tucked under its wing. Any extra effort in breathing, which can look like a tail bob, any change in voice, or they're quieter than normal, not as talkative. Really any subtle signs that's any different than the behavior they typically exhibit. And those are all really, really good ones. I, I would also add maybe a, a decrease in the number of droppings. Right. It's often hard to know exactly how much your bird is eating, particularly if they're eating a lot of seeds, which is not what we recommend. That's a whole other topic. But um, you can look for the number of droppings in the cage. And if you don't see uh, a large number of fresh droppings in a short period of time, you know that the bird probably isn't eating as much as he or she should. Exactly. Yeah. So, but we don't really want to wait till they're sick. So we want to bring them in. And what kind of things typically maybe we can describe do we do as part of our preventative medical workup? Mm -hmm. Well, as you mentioned before, seeds are not an optimal diet. And we go through nutrition very thoroughly because having a good nutrition is a good basis for lifelong health. Uh, we also typically, just like if you were to go to the doctor and the, you, the doctor hadn't seen you in a while, they'd want to look at your blood work. They'd want to draw some blood and analyze it. And we do the same thing for birds. We get baselines on all of their organ functions and their cholesterol level and their blood sugar level and all of the same things that's looked at in people. And we also check their stool. Their stool is a very good indicator of the bacterial population in their intestines. And if they have any abnormal bacteria or yeast, that indicates that something's going on. Exactly. And we do that on all birds, really. I mean, it, size is usually not a big limitation. We take blood from very, very small birds, as small as little budgerigars or parakeets, all the way up through the very, very large macaws. We probably see more parrots than anything else, but we also see chickens and ducks, other types of waterfowl, geese, peacocks, and, and really all of these birds, if they're kept in captivity, should have regular checkups to make sure that they're healthy. And we spend most of our time, as Dr. Ravitch mentioned, educating people about diet and environment. And all the dietary recommendations that we make are really based on the species of the bird, sometimes on the age of the bird. Um, a young growing bird may have a nutritional requirement that's very, very different from an older bird whose activity is less or one that, you know, sits a little more sedentary than a very active young bird who's out all the time flying around. So we do recommend regular checkups and blood work and stool sample testing. And I think more than ever now, we are looking at diseases that develop as birds age. And and although we recommend checkups once a year for all birds and blood work at least every couple of years for young birds, we are recommending blood work every year for birds as they get older since they do live quite old. You know, and, and that's one of the things we're seeing. So could you mention a little bit about that, Dr. Rauch? Sure. You know, as we were talking about, birds can carry certain infectious diseases for a while that may suddenly, as they age, decide to start causing a problem. And with some certain different types of blood work screening, we can pick up if those infectious diseases are causing a problem. And we may also pick up subtle elevations in kidney values or liver values. That's something we'd want to follow and look at the trends of, because if we can start treating them early, we can prevent horrible disease. Unfortunately, because a lot of people don't bring their birds to the vet regularly, we end up seeing a a lot of birds where the disease is so progressed it's hard to treat them for anything and it's very frustrating for us and it's very frustrating for the owner because the bird is so sick by the time it comes to see us it's very hard to bring it around. 
Exactly. I mean, we really can prevent diseases like strokes to some degree. Birds get atherosclerosis or hardening of their arteries when they're on a high fat, typically all seed and nut diet, just like people can. They'll survive. They'll get enough calories on those seeds and nuts. And certainly we can survive on junk food ourselves. But in the end, they become nutritionally deficient and they deposit a lot of cholesterol and fat in their arteries, which predisposes them to strokes and heart disease the same way as it does in, in people. And we, we've actually seen that quite a bit in some of the older parrot species that live a long time, like Amazon parrots are, are predisposed to becoming obese and getting fatty liver and all kinds of problems, high cholesterols. Um, we treat those birds with many of the same drugs that are seen in people, Lipitor and some of the other fat and, and cholesterol-lowering drugs, triglyceride-lowering drugs. And as Dr. Ravitch mentioned, we do see quite a bit of kidney disease, gout in birds because a lot of birds unfortunately are still eating a seed diet and seeds are very nutritionally deficient particularly in vitamin A. Vitamin A is really important to birds' kidneys, the lining of the kidneys and when they don't get enough vitamin A, the lining of the kidneys changes and that white substance that normally appears in the urine, the uric acid, which is a, a solid waste product because birds conserve water, they pull water out of their stool and their urine to conserve water since they're flying around. That solid waste product, uric acid, plugs up in the kidneys and causes a lot of inflammation, a condition called gout. And as a result, they can go into kidney failure. So it's very, very important to have birds checked because if we note that early on, we can give them medications that can, you know, extend their life and make the quality of their life better. But um, there are so many other things we want to get to, but we're going to take a little break right now. So please stay tuned and we're going to get back to our really interesting topic about preventative medical treatment for birds. But just now a word from our sponsors. Stay perched. We'll be soaring back right after these messages. Put on a perfectly possum pet party. Having an awesome birthday or adoption day celebration for your four-legged friend? Or just want a fun excuse to throw a fun party with your friends from the dog park? Deck out your party with Molly and Bandit Pet Party Accessories, party products designed specifically for pets. There are wearables, including adjustable pet party hats, bow ties, and tutus. The photo prop kits include funny glasses and hats. The party supplies and decorations include coordinating table covers, party banners, cake decorations, and treat bowls, cups, and bags. Everything you need to create great memories and Instagram-worthy photos. They're available in two colorful themes, Tropical and Fireman. It's a dog's life. Celebrate it with Molly and Bandit Pet Party at mollyandbanditpetparty.com slash pet life. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Dot com. <laughs> Hi there. Welcome back to A Bird's Eye View. I'm Dr. Lori Hess, bird and exotic animal veterinarian, here with Dr. Michelle Ravitch, also a bird and exotic animal vet, and we are at the Veterinary Center for Birds and Exotics in Bedford Hills, New York. If you would like to reach us, you can reach us at our website, www.avian, that's A, V as in Victor, I, A, N as in Nancy, exotics, the word exotic with an S on the end, vet as in veterinarian.com, avianexoticsvet.com, and we are now coming back to our topic today, which is actually preventative medical therapy for birds. We left off talking about some of the diseases that we can see in birds that are, are not on a good diet and, and haven't had good medical treatment. There are so many of them. Can we think of some other ones? We talked about kidney disease and high fat diets and hardening of the arteries and strokes. What else do we have to talk about, Dr. Ravitch? Birds can develop reproductive problems that can happen both in males and females, um, and it can start fairly young, you know, as soon as they reach uh, reproductive maturity after a few years, even in some birds. And females actually are able to lay eggs on their own without the presence of a male, just like a chicken can. And they can develop problems, especially as we mentioned before, if they're on a poor diet, such as all seeds, they don't have enough nutrients, they don't have enough calcium to make it an egg properly. And they themselves can become deficient in these nutrients and have very brittle bones, or they can produce malformed eggs and be unable to lay the egg. And sometimes it's a life-threatening emergency. And so when we see birds for a normal wellness exam, we'll discuss these and give people signs for what to look for. I mean, we really stress nutrition, again, as being essential to birds' health. And then with yearly checkups, we can at least get an idea if these birds are reproductively active. Any other diseases? 
I was thinking too, um, just like people, birds can get arthritis and many of the older birds that we see who are perhaps haven't been getting the activity level they would if they were out flying around in the wild, those that live a long time like Amazon parrots or some of the macaws or cockatoos, if they're eating a poor diet and they're sitting around a lot, not using their muscles and their joints properly, and they, particularly if they become obese, which is certainly a problem in many of these birds on high fat diets, they can get arthritis, they can get sores on the bottom of their feet, they can lead to some serious infections. And again, a lot of these are prevented by being on a better diet, getting good exercise, even setting up the cage properly, having the right size perches, different diameter perches so that they're not always putting the same pressure on the same spots on their feet and getting them out of the cage and moving around, exercising, even if they're not flying. And and we do believe here in wing trimming because we see, unfortunately, every year a number of birds either fly away or fly into things and become injured seriously by flying around their home. So even if you do trim their wings, they can get out of the cage and safely exercise and flap around and even run around on the floor and still get good exercise so that it become obese. That's a very good point. So we focus a lot on nutrition. There's a lot of other things that we teach here as part of a good preventative medical workup. And one of them is just environment. There are a lot of hazards in our environment. A lot have to do with our environment, our human environment, but also the immediate cage environment. So maybe we'll talk a little bit about that and mention some of the things, the advice that we focus on with clients maybe that get a new bird or that haven't come to the vet in a while and are kind of updating their, their cage husbandry. Some people will think that they need specialized covering for the bottom of the cage. We really recommend so like paper-based bottoms. Things like walnuts, chips, and corn cobs and things like that can promote bacterial growth, can promote fungal growth. And birds are fairly prone to getting respiratory or lung infections from a fungus. And just a plain you know, paper, even newspaper that you can throw out once a week or, or even uh, more frequently and replace to keep it as clean as possible and not have any particles that the bird can ingest and cause an obstruction or foreign body in their intestines. Very good point. I mean, I know a lot of people out there are still using the sandpaper covered perches and the sandpaper bottom cage paper. And we now actually know that a lot of birds will pick off that sandpaper and it will get stuck in their intestinal tract and cause an obstruction. It really doesn't help them to, you know, grind up their food. I mean, in fact, the parrots that we see and many even of the finches, the passerine birds, the finches and the canaries, they actually take the hulls off of seeds before they eat them. And so only like the pigeons and the doves that actually ingest the whole seeds, only only those birds uh, are the ones that need a little bit of gravel or, or gritty material in their stomachs. So the, the parrots and the, the finches and the canaries actually don't need that. So that's uh, one thing that we can clarify for people. Mm-hmm. I think we should talk a little bit about cage location as well because a lot of people unfortunately are mistaken as to the best place where, to keep the cage in their home. Right. And to some extent, it depends on the type of bird you have. Some birds do well in a very active environment, and they do best in a family room or near a kitchen, for example. And some birds are more shy, and they get very stressed out with a lot of traffic. And they might do better in an office or um, a separated room. Going back to the kitchen, sometimes things we cook in the kitchen can actually be dangerous to birds. Using non-stick or Teflon-type pans, if they're burned, can cause fumes that can kill birds in a matter of seconds. So we caution people not to have those types of pans. We also caution people to be careful when they're cooking, potentially move birds away from the kitchen area. People also think that keeping their birds near a window is good for sunlight. And it's really good for stimulation to allow the birds to look out the window and watch what's going on. But as far as sunlight goes, all the important rays in the sun are actually filtered out by the window. So we do recommend having a light, a UV-type light, for birds instead to stimulate the sunlight. That's very, very important. And unfortunately, again, people are mistaken about that that window. It's really nice for them psychologically to have that sunlight, but it doesn't really do the trick in terms of allowing them to make vitamin D in their skin the way they should. And we just mentioning, in addition addition to the Teflon, I mean, it's not just Teflon pans. Those are the most common culprits, but every year we encounter people who get a new oven or a new toaster oven, and they're not even aware that there's Teflon in those things. I mean, I recall a couple years ago, I was on emergency call duty, and I got a call from a friend who was was just very, very distraught about the fact that they had just lost one of their birds. Their birds were just dropping like flies in front of them after they had cooked a a Thanksgiving turkey and they didn't know what to do and um, they were with one more bird who was just collapsing and they ran outside to get ventilation but they really, really couldn't save the bird in any way, shape or form. 
there was nothing that they could do, and unfortunately, all five birds died. So it was a very, very sad situation, and it's something that's really preventable. So if you have birds in your home at all, we caution you about having them anywhere near the kitchen. Even when you don't think you're going to burn something, even if you don't have Teflon, even just uh, the smoke of like a grease fire or anything like that, birds are so sensitive to um, any kind of inhaled toxic things. And then it goes for cleaners, too. You mm-hmm. know, we hear a lot of times people have cleaning products near their birds' cages or cleaners come into people's homes not really thinking mm-hmm. about the birds, and they use sprays around their birds' aerosols, and, and birds die from that as well. Even air fresheners or cigarette smoke, all of that is really bad for birds' lungs. They have a very sensitive respiratory system um, that is specialized to allow them to fly, and it's very different from ours, but it is very sensitive to a lot of these aerosolized products. Even uh, one other thing that you might not think about is candle wicks. Candle wicks, a lot of them have lead in them, and when you burn them, the little microscopic particles of lead, you know, that would not necessarily bother us in a big room, can be inhaled by birds and and cause toxicity. So these are all simple little things. But again, a lot of people are not aware of these things. And what our job is as bird veterinarians is to keep you educated as bird owners about the latest and the greatest in information on birds. (laughs) It's challenging for us because there's so many different types of birds, and we treat other types of animals as well beside birds, but um, it's really, really important to keep up to date and know what's going on in birds out there and what we can do to keep our birds safe. I think, let's see, there's some other things we wanted to get to. Any other really good preventative medical things we could mention? I think something really good that we haven't touched on is that a lot of times people will get a new bird and they have other birds at home and they'll immediately take the new bird and put it in the same room as the other bird or even the same cage if you're talking about parakeets. And what they have to realize is that a lot of these birds actually come from totally different continents. Some come from Australia, some come from South America, some come from Africa. And the birds on these different continents all are susceptible to different infectious diseases. And some birds can carry infectious diseases and not have a problem and then pass it on to other types of birds and that it could be deadly in them. And we really recommend, again, having your bird examined by a veterinarian right when you purchase it for this very reason. But also because it could be a hazard to your birds at home and certain species Species of birds shouldn't necessarily mix together, and keeping a new bird in a separate room for a few months prior to introducing it to your old birds is a very important and very good practice to get into. Very, very important. And I think even just casual contact with other birds. I mean, a lot of times, you know, birds need nails trimmed and wings trimmed. You just want to make sure that wherever you go to take your birds for grooming like that, that they really sterilize their equipment in between use. I know we do a lot of it at the animal hospital. We are very, very careful to sterilize Dremel drills that we use on birds' beaks if we have to trim them. Uh, We don't really trim beaks unless there's a problem with them, since birds really don't need that. But even nails, I mean, we have a cautery that we use on their nails so it it heats up and it disinfects at the same time. We really are very, very careful about that. And we caution people, you know, when you go back to the bird store or you go to your friend's house, just make sure that you keep your bird's utensils just as you would if you were having a manicure yourself in in the nail salon. Keep your stuff separate, your bird stuff separate from other birds. That leads us to boarding as well. I mean, you know, we could mention a little bit about boarding. Mm -hmm. And from what I talked about previously with infectious disease and the fact that birds are very very prone to getting respiratory infections that spread through the air. A lot of boarding places, you have to be very careful because if your bird is going in for boarding, you don't know the history of any of the other birds there and any bird could be carrying any sort of infectious disease. And it's important when you look for a boarding place that they do a careful screening of any boarding birds to do the best job they can to guarantee that the bird is healthy as possible. You know, and not having birds breathe on other birds or in close contact with other birds is also very important. And that's one of the things we're very conscious of here at at our animal hospital, the Veterinary Center for Birds and Exotics. We do quite a bit of boarding and we do require uh, a full medical exam and blood work and stool sample checks before boarding every year before an animal boards, just because we want to keep not only that animal safe, but all the other animals, all the other birds around him or her safe. And in our boarding ward, which happens to be beautiful and has a television, and they can listen to music, so it's nice for them. But there are walls, there are moving walls that we can put up between the cages so no bird has to breathe on the other birds or is stressed by seeing the other birds. So we really have designed our boarding ward to be optimal to the best that we can in keeping down infectious disease and keeping animals low stress. And that's something, you know, wherever you are in the United States or anywhere else, you want to make sure that if you're boarding your bird, you're very, very careful about where you put him because you can be a wonderful owner at home and do all the 
right things at home, but just exposing a bird to the same airspace as a sick bird, that your bird can become sick as well. So these are things to think about. And again, these are all things that if you come to us or if you go to any good, solid avian veterinarian, he or she should tell you all of these things and should be able to answer your questions about nutrition and environment and diet, any of the things that we've talked about today. I would recommend that you seek out a good bird veterinarian. There are places you can find them on the internet. Um, The Association of Avian Veterinarians has a wonderful website. It's www.aav.org. There are veterinarians listed by state there. So if you're looking for a good veterinarian, the veterinarians that belong to the Avian Association are those that really have kept current or that try very hard to keep current. Certainly, if you're in New York, we'd love to see you. Again, we're the Veterinary Center for Birds and Exotics. We have a very active website, which is www.avian, A V I A N exotics with an S on the end, vet.com. And we also have a very active Facebook page, which is under Veterinary Center for Birds and Exotics. If you have questions, we're happy to have you post them there. We do put quite a bit of educational material up on our Facebook page and our website every single day. Um, we really enjoy putting information there about birds and other exotic animals, and we encourage your questions. We'd love to meet you if you happen to be in the neighborhood, and we'd love to meet your bird. So there's so much more to cover in terms of of care of birds that we couldn't possibly even just touch on in such a short session, but we will have future shows on this topic. I think we're out of time now, but we'd like to thank everybody for listening. Again, I'm Dr. Lori Hess, and this is Dr. Michelle Ravitch, and we'd like to thank our producers for making this show possible. It's a bird's eye view, and we hope you'll tune in again soon. Thank you very, very much. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand. Only on PetLifeRadio.com.